guys, today we're going to be chatting all about some brand new products to Wet n Wild. These will all be launching over the next few months and I'm so excited. There's new eyeshadow palettes, new highlighting products, new brow stuff, some really great items and of course Wet n Wild is incredibly affordable. They're cruelty free and working to become completely vegan as well which is awesome and they just have really great products. So we're going to be kind of swatching and going through everything today if you'd like to see a full face Wet n Wild with some more of these products in action let me know and I will also have some blog posts linked below along with posts coming up on my blog and of course timestamps if you'd like to skip ahead and see specific products but let's go ahead and get started and before I get into it I don't have a ton of information on where the products are going to be showing up in Canada but of course everything will be available on wetandwild.com a lot of these products are available on Ulta which all ship to Canada but the actual retailers just keep an eye out at the places you know sell Wet n Wild and if you can, if you're feeling confident, kind of complain to them online and let them know we'd like more Wet n Wild in Canada because it's the retailers who are stopping Wet n Wild from being here in Canada and readily available, not Wet n Wild. They want to be here. So anyways, let's do this. The first thing I want to talk about is what I'm the most excited about, and that is the brand new Color Icon eyeshadow palettes. Wet n Wild has always been so well known for their great eyeshadows, so they have released 10 pan eyeshadow palettes. There are four of them, retailing for $6.99 and there are some kind of recreations of palettes in here and then there's some brand new palettes with a new shadow formula and I know you're probably asking how is the shadow formula we will get to that momentarily but what I want to say and I don't want to take credit for this but I think I kind of had something to do with the fact that there's matte eyeshadows in here that are good for transition shades. I actually chatted with their marketing manager and we had a really good um, conversation. First of all, we chatted a lot about the vanity palette. Remember the vanity palette? I told her about the power of a matte brown transition shade in a drugstore palette and she was like, I never thought about that. So if that palette comes back, you're welcome. Okay, I'm just kidding, I know. I had absolutely nothing to do with warm matte shades showing up in these palettes, but I thought it was really funny that I was complaining last year to one of the VPs about no matte shades, no matte transition shades, no warm shades in the palettes, and then they showed up this year. But either way, super, super happy to see them there in the palettes. Moving on to the actual eyeshadow palettes themselves, overall, I am really happy with them. They were reformulated, so I was a little bit nervous because the original color icons are super, super beautiful, pigmented, and creamy. I will say that some of the shades feel a little bit dry, and I haven't had a chance to play with every single one of the shades on my eyes yet, but in general, if you see one of these palettes kind of calling your name, pick it up. They retail for such a nice price. You're gonna get a great result. It may not be exactly the same as high-end, but I am so happy with the eye look that I'm wearing today. I do prefer some of the palettes over the others, so let's go ahead and get into my favorites. No surprise here, Not A Basic Peach is, as soon as I saw this at the launch event, I was like, oh, what? What is this? I hadn't seen anything about it before. I was so excited. So you're getting those two big matte shades in here. One of them I used to set my eyeshadow primer, the other I'm wearing in the crease of my eye. And then on top of those two mattes, you're actually getting uh, two other true matte three other true mattes and then one kind of satin shade. The peach in here has a little bit of glitter, but basically it doesn't show up on your eyes. The peach is probably the least exciting shade in the palette quality wise. It does show up nicely in the uh, kind of crease of the eyes, but as like a poppy lid shade, I don't think it's really gonna happen. And then the shimmers in here are really nice as well. The kind of burnished orangey shimmer shade is a little bit chunky, but I'm wearing it on my lid today and I really do like it overall. It's fabulous. Like, I could say not a bad thing about it because of the retail price, but I do just want to let you know some of the pros and cons, of course, but overall, I think it's absolutely fabulous. It's something I will actually use. I could travel with this. I think it's just such a beautiful palette. The pop of blue is fun as well. Maybe not something I'm going to use all the time, but it is a really fun shade and overall a great palette. On to the next palette that's an absolute favorite of mine. This is in the shade Rosé in the Air. Again, exact same format. You're getting those two matte shades, and I love this one but I probably love it because it's really looking similar to a favorite palette of mine, which is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance. But first let's chat about this palette as an individual. You're getting those two big matte shades in here. And then of course, there's a ton of mattes in here, which is getting more popular at the drugstore, but still quite unique in my opinion. So you the only shimmer shades in here, there's two shimmers, there's kind of a light gold, and then kind of that wine shade is a little bit of a shimmer. 
This is again beautiful. A little bit powdery. You do need to build up the shades a little bit, but I don't find them patchy by any means. They blend beautifully. And with a shadow that's more buildable, you, you make less mistakes. I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes too much pigment can be a little bit overwhelming. Now, the eyeshadow palette elephant in the room is the fact that this looks identical to the modern Renaissance palette. I actually decided to swatch them side by side and they look incredibly similar. I haven't done like a side by side eye and tested them out throughout the day or anything like that. But I do, I do think that the shadows in the Modern Renaissance palette are better than this one, but that palette costs substantially more than this one. So if you have been eyeing that, if you're looking for that kind of look or you just enjoy those kind of shades, I definitely recommend this one. I will still use this on its own and I will still continue to use my Modern Renaissance. I'm just an addict. This actually may be great for travel because it is quite small and then you don't run the risk of breaking your Modern Renaissance. Again, like I said, the shadows aren't going to be exactly the same, but I am really, really impressed with this. I mean, I can't give Wet n Wild full credit for this palette because it's pretty clear what they've done here. Uh, they did not come up with this shade range, but overall, as an individual palette, if I can even call it an individual palette, I think that it's great, and if you have been looking for an alternative, this is a good one. Let's talk Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. It is new and improved, potentially, depending on who you ask. Um, the improvement here is the fact that there are two beautiful warm matte shades in here. That is what the Comfort Zone palette lacked, that is what all the color icon palettes lacked. It had beautiful lid shades but nothing to really make a complete look in my opinion. So kudos to them for adding that in here. This makes it a beautiful palette. That being said, Wet n Wild Comfort Zone was never my favorite just because of the shade range. It is a little bit cooler but it does definitely get warmed up here with these two matte transition shades that are in here. I think that I prefer some of the lighter shades in the original comfort zone palette over the lighter shades in this one but the deeper shades are a little bit better in the new one so if you have the old one you don't necessarily need this because you probably have warm transition shades in there but if you haven't purchased the comfort zone palette you can definitely get this one as for if the other color icon palettes are disappearing I'm not totally sure yet maybe if I get an answer I will update in the description box I haven't gotten like a straight answer on if they're both sticking around moving on to the last palette this is the nude awakening and this came in kind of like a skinny kind of 10 pan thing if you remember that I haven't actually compared this one to that one I did like that palette this one is nice if you like kind of like taupey burgundy ish shades a really beautiful you're getting some kind of cooler toned matte bigger shades here so this one is like a kind of a cool toned brown and then this one is a little bit more of like a a gray beige thing so if you like a little bit more of a cooler tone palette this would be a great one for you the mattes I think I prefer almost the mattes in these palettes to the shimmers that's not to say the shimmers are bad you can build them up I like to use them with my finger but the mattes are just so good. Next up, we're going to continue talking eyeshadows, but these are their quads, and they have had trios and quads out for quite some time. There are six in this range. Three of them are updated versions of existing quads or trios, and then three of them are brand new. Overall, I would say that these, again, are really great quality eyeshadows. They're retailing for around $3.99, which is awesome. There are a few duds in here, so we'll kind of chat about them as we go through. I do want to move a little faster because I have a lot to talk about. So the first is the shades Light out this is a brand new quad if you are into greens I think that this is really nice overall the quality on this one seems pretty good throughout you're getting the one matte shade in there and then three kind of more shimmer shades if you like a really deep eye look another one of the new additions is the hooked on vinyl you're getting two matte shades in here and two shimmers this is probably my favorite of the six quads that have been released for the third kind of new quad that has been released. This is in the shade Petal it. It's like petal and palette mixed together. This is really beautiful if you love purples. I was really excited about the brow bone shade in here because it kind of looked like it was going to be like cube from the Anastasia subculture palette. It looks white but then you can see when you swatch it it has a duo chrome. I haven't actually worn this on my eyes yet. Upon swatching it it definitely didn't reflect as much duo chrome or even pigment as I was hoping for but the other shades do look really nice. And then the other three quads are actually reformulated and revamped versions of their older kind of eyeshadow smaller palettes so you have sweet as candy which is quite nice really similar to the walking on eggshells and they they both existed I would love to see some more updated warmer and golden quads in here the kind of pink and brown thing is a little bit overdone in my opinion but they are both nice quads and then the last one is silent treatment if I'm not mistaken 
the silent treatment palette had a pure black in the old one but again if you like kind of mauve taupey shades this could be a great option for you Moving away from the eyeshadows momentarily, I want to talk about highlights for a second. They have released the Hello Halo Liquid Highlighter. These are going to retail for $7.99. They actually come in a glass package, which seems really, really luxe, but just be careful not to drop it. You're getting a huge doe foot applicate in here, so similar to like a Tarte Shape Tape. I'm wearing this one, I think, Gilded Glow, or maybe no, wait. I'm wearing Goddess Glow. So they come in seven different shades. I have six of them here. I really like these. I've been getting more into cream and liquid products. I have oily skin, so I'm super picky, and these seem to pass the test for me because they're not super oily, although they do have grapeseed oil and maybe vitamin E in there, I think I read, for hydration, but I'm not really looking for hydration from a highlighter. I'm, look making, I'm looking to make myself look hydrated and fake it, but these feel really nice on the skin and they dry down nicely. I've worn them under and over powder. If I'm using them over powder, I'll use a little bit less. I will be sure to go really, really lightly, but I haven't had a problem with them removing foundation or anything like that. I think the shade range is really beautiful. You have some kind of pink ones, they get a little bit deeper, and then of course you have the beautiful golds that also go up to about a bronze. So they seem to be pretty suitable for the majority of skin types. I think most people will be able to find something that they love in here. I like the doe foot applicator, and I've also worn them under highlighters, and I've also just worn them on their own, and I've gotten a nice glow both ways. Let's continue talking highlighters. This came out recently, and I was so excited to see this. I feel like they're super sneaky and just like release all this stuff and I never saw it coming but this is the Mega Glow Highlighting Palette and this I thought was really really interesting it is a limited edition item available on their website and on Ulta you're getting four shades in here which I believe are limited edition shades so you're getting uh, Sweet Peony, Diamond Lily, Wild Cosmos, and Blushing Azalea. Overall, these seem to be basically the exact same formula as their existing Mega Glow highlighters. With the exception of this one down here in the corner, I feel like it had a little bit of glitter in here. This is definitely in the same vein as like an Anastasia Moonchild or Kat Von D whatever her triangle palette was in the sense that it has kind of cooler tone highlights so definitely not something that I personally reach for all the time because I have a very warm skin tone I would love to see this come out in I'm cool with the colors being like a little bit different I have no problem with that I have enough gold highlighters as it is but I feel like all of these duochrome highlights that come out aren't as suitable to deeper skin tones I would love to see some deeper holographic um, highlighters that have more pink more orange more yellow even blue or purple but they just need to have a little bit more deepness. I haven't played around with this a ton on my face. I have a little bit just kind of in passing, swatching, putting it on before I take my makeup off at night. So it definitely is really nice, but not something I would personally reach for all the time. But if you do have a lighter skin tone or if you tend to like these products a lot, be sure to grab it sooner than later. It's retailing for $13 or $14.99. The packaging is a little bit flimsy on this guy, but I mean, you're getting so many great highlighters in here for a super cheap price, but just something to keep in mind. They've also released some new Mega Glow highlighters. These are part of their permanent collection, and some of these have been out for a little while. Some of them they're just kind of putting a push on now, and I've been meaning to chat about these, but I haven't gotten around to it. So you actually may be able to find these in store now. And of course, if you have found any of these products, whether wherever you live, let us know down below because I know everyone is always on the hunt for Wet n Wild. The shade that I am wearing on my cheeks right now is Golden Flower Crown, and I really think that this, from the two shades that they originally released, this was was what I was kind of missing. They were both beautiful shades that they had out, but they didn't have just kind of that classic gold. So really excited to see this in here. Then they also have Botanic Dream. This is beautiful. This is kind of what I was looking for out of the highlighting palette because it's pink, it's interesting, it's fun, but it has a little bit of depth in there, which I think is really important just for variety's sake. And all of these make great eyeshadows. I've talked about these before, so I don't need to get into the quality. The quality is great. Some of the best highlighters at the drugstore. Then they have Blonde awesome glow so if you're a little bit of a lighter skin tone this has a beautiful pink undertone a little bit too icy for my skin and then the last one which is super fun is royal calyx this has a blue kind of purple shift to it and you may not want to spend a big box on like a blue purple shift highlighter because i know personally i wouldn't wear it all the time but it's the kind of thing that i would like to have just in case i want to rock something like that so for 4.99 this just makes such an amazing deal and these highlighters are just incredible if you have yet to try them you need to try them.
I've talked about the gel pout lip liners before and I'm not going to get into a ton of detail. Basically they're just a great fabulous lip liner if you're able to spot them. These will retail for around $3.99 and there's six new shades. So they already had six shades, they've released six more. I have two of them here and this one it's perfect it's exactly the kind of shade that I look for in a lip liner and then this one is really light it's in the shade uh, sand nudes this is far too light for me to ever use as a lip liner it has a peachy undertone I actually used it under my eyebrows today to highlight my brow bone I don't know I wanted to make use of it it's super creamy if you were looking for a lip liner like this then here it is but it's just so incredibly light back to their new launches this is the retractable brow pencil super excited to see this come out they had had some other brow pencils but none that were in kind of this new retractable style that has been incredibly popular over the past year or two these have kind of that triangle tip so similar to the Makeup Forever brow pencil or the Anastasia brow definer, I think it is. You're getting a spoolie on one end. There are how many shades? There's four shades in the range. They retail for $5.99. They have a little bit of a drier texture, which I appreciate. I would definitely 3000% rather drier over creamier when it comes to brow product, brow, brow products. It gives me much more control. If you have really thin brows and you're looking to really draw on tiny, tiny hairs, this may not be it because it is a little bit thicker, but I do have thicker brows personally. I'm just kind of looking to fill in a little bit, add a little bit of definition, lengthen the tail sometimes. So for me, these are great. I'm wearing the shade medium brown, but I've also worn the shade, I think it's soft brown ash brown as well and then there are some lighter shades in the range so I think that this is a really nice brow pencil the drugstore has really stepped up their brow game so I'm glad to see that Wet n Wild is in it as well Let's move back to eyeshadows. They have reformulated some of their former shades of the singles, which have been around forever. And then they've also added some new shades. So I have raved about and absolutely love the shade Brulee. I think it is so good. They've also reformulated some of their other shades. So things like the shade Nutty, Panther, Sugar, those have all existed in the line and they seem really great quality. And then they've also released some deeper shades. So you have kind of a dark, blue shade in there, a dark purple, and a dark green. These are not the kind of shades, like, I'm not like, oh, I really need a single dark green. I need a single dark blue. I would love to see more browns. I would love to see just a bigger range of shades because these singles are actually really good. So I think that they could easily have like 20, 30 in the range of maybe a matter of shelf space. So to me, the shade range just feels a little bit weird, but it's kind of personal preference. Overall, the quality is good. So that is everything new that is launching from Wet n Wild. These should be showing up in the next few months, November, December, January, February. It kind of depends on where you live, what stores you go to, but overall, as soon as it all launches, it will be on wetandwildbeauty.com first. So if you're looking to get your hands on it, if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at SamanthaJaneYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.